Hello and welcome to Who Are You? This is a Babylon 5 Watchcast hosted by two former strangers, now friends, who've gotten to know each other while rewatching a favorite show of their childhood, Babylon 5. I'm Jafer. And I'm Laura. We're starting up season four here and we have our first plot poker of the season. Hello. So I deal myself in. Yeah. We can go ahead and open some packs. And while we're opening some packs, we can talk a little bit about some stuff coming up. We've got Ben guesting on the pod in two weeks. Very excited for that. And we have been lining up a handful of guests as well. Mm -hmm. uh, f till the end of season four, we're going to have somewhere between four to six guests on the pod right now. Which is just wild to me. I love it. It's crazy. I'm, I'm so here for it. I just, uh, I don't want to drop too many names. I know we're going to have Gray 17 back. I know we're going to have Yum Yum back. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to have some other people in the League of non Online podcasts or not even necessarily Babylon 5 podcasters, ideally. Yeah. So we'll see how all of that goes. But uh, Branching out. I'm excited. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Ooh, I got the death of Kosh. And it's got his, like, ruined helmet on the table. Oh, yeah. I remember that scene. Yeah. That's a that's a problem, right? <laughs> that's got to be a problem. You know, I was thinking about how uh, appropriate it is that we're doing plot poker today. Yeah. Because at this point in time, there's currently a writer's strike going on. <laughs> so, big deal, right? Shows aren't getting written and won't be getting made pretty soon if this doesn't get resolved. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's good that we're making up our own plots and plot poker so we can show people just how badly real writers are needed. <laughs> right. Like, this is the kind of television, this would be everything yeah. if it weren't for writers. <laughs> Big support <laughs> to the writers. Ooh, I got Lieutenant David Corwin. Oh, nice. I think I have a Corwin in there somewhere. Ooh, I got a Zathras I haven't seen before. Z A T <laughs> Another Zathras. Apostrophe. Do, did we talked about this last time? Do you have a Zathras in every pile? I do not have a Zathras in any pile right now. <laughs> I oh, don't think. I, mu I must have them in one. That's, I know we've used Zathras as a character, but I feel like Zathras can also be a problem solution or twist. So A hundred percent. Did you see the uh, thing that uh, Claudia Christensen tweeted the cast of the Babylon 5 reboot and everyone was Zathras? Not the one. That's appropriate. I don't feel like I'm getting great cards this time. I have a um, Minister Durano who I did not recognize by name, but it says he is a Centauri spy master. Ooh. I don't remember him specifically, but I bet he'll come up this season. More than likely. I got a uh, cheat fate with Lorian from this episode. It's even got the quote, you are quite, quite dead. Oh, Nice. And another Zathras I haven't seen before. <laughs> You're going to have the full set, man. How many different Zathrases did we say there were? I can't remember. I think there's one with an apostrophe in every place. Yeah. But they're kind of spread out throughout various sets. So we won't see all of them unless we want to spend some stupid money on one of those really expensive boxes. Because I think yeah. the next couple of boxes lined up for us are pricey e I, know, I think the season five box the wheel of fire box is something like two hundred dollars and it's just like mm, maybe we not. should put a gofundme out there <laughs> <laughs> everybody fund our box of cards man i don't feel like i got very many interesting cards at all i got a lot of the vague sort of situation cards so we'll go ahead and start with our a plot uh if you have not heard this bit before we have four piles of cards built out of the Babylon 5 collectible card game in front of us. We have a uh, instigating character or visitor to the station. We have a problem, we have a solution, and we have a twist. And so what's going to happen is this time Laura's going to do the A plot I'm out of her four cards. I'm going to do the B plot out of my four cards. And then we're going to rate this episode on a scale of Babylon 1 to 5 like we had just watched it. Yeah, and we're flipping these things over as we're going. So this uh, is, Yeah, I got no idea. I got four cards sitting in front of me. I know which one is which because I put them in order, but I don't know what they actually are. 
So. Right. And quality is not guaranteed on this. No, we've had some so. stinkers. Yeah. Definitely support your local writers on their strike because <laughs> you do not want us doing this. He was more than a hero. He was a union man. 100%. Okay. So here goes a plot. Oh, hey. My a plot character is John Sheridan. Oh, hey. So, hey, we get the uh, the big guns right out of the gate. Maybe this will be a good episode. And the problem that John Sheridan is dealing with, oh, this is a classic. Yeah. He's got a hate crime on the station. Ah. Uh. So, yeah, we've definitely heard this uh, problem before. The card is, of course, the Mimbari character from season one mm -hmm. that was attacked. But so the solution to this, uh-oh, is we're going to solve this hate crime that happened on Babylon 5 with some backroom dealing. Oh. Oh. It's so an unusual way to handle a hate crime. It is an unusual way to handle a hate crime. Normally, I'm not um, particularly fond of this when this happens in real life. <laughs> right. But you know what? It is consistent a little bit with what we've seen from some of Sheridan's character, right? Because mm -hmm. we had some very questionable actions when he was questioning Mr. Morton. Yes. The lack of due process and all. So we've got this this hate crime. I don't know. What race do you think the hate crime is committed against? Oh, maybe we'll find yeah, so. out in the B-plot. Oh, yeah. Good point. I won't, I won't speculate. <laughs> maybe your B-plot's going to inform me. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> here we go. This is great. The twist is that John Sheridan feels kind of bad about these backroom dealings that we use to solve this hate crime. Mm -hmm. And so he goes on walkabout. <laughs> He's going to go find himself because he doesn't know who he is anymore. Oh, good. Holler at Yum Yum. They want, they want the yeah. news. They'll love this. All you right. should mail him this card. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Except it'd be like atrociously expensive to mail to Australia. Uh, you could card. probably just throw it in an envelope with like six stamps. He'll probably get there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me the B-plot. Our B-plot has Justin, the other shadow leader dude from oh, Zaha yeah, Doom. who got blowed up. Yeah. He got blowed up. So this is before that. But he okay. comes to the station. Oh, to have a meeting with William Morgan Clark. Whoa. Big deal. Big yeah. deal. This is this is not President Clark. This is Vice President Clark. Okay. So this would be, I guess, in season one, Justin shows up and has a meeting with Clark. Maybe Clark's coming to the station and we see Justin kind of come in. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, this is really bad time for there to be a hate crime. Yes. So... Yeah. This timing has lost all semblance because our solution is Lita empowered. Oh. <laughs> which is Lita post Vorlon stuff is also mm -hmm. here and make sure that uh, I'm guessing Justin's trying to maybe pull some shit, maybe try and get some access to the vice president that he's not supposed to have. Yeah. And maybe he caused the hate crime too. Maybe he caused the hate crime. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's Clark's visit spurned the hate crime. And it's, uh, I don't think we see hate crimes against humans at all in the show. Yeah, no. A little bit, maybe, but not really particularly common. Maybe it's something along those lines. Uh -huh. um, or maybe, you know, since he's such a xenophobe, it's probably more likely that some of his support supporters, like, attacked yeah. some Nimbari poet did the hate again. Crime. Yeah, humans did yeah. the hate crime. Yeah, that checks out. That's why we need backroom dealings. Exactly. To... Yeah. Because okay. Clark's on the station. But uh, yeah. Lita stops Justin's associates from getting to Clark. And then our twist is, this is perfect. What do you want? Mm. So they stop Justin from getting to Clark. But right. Morden does. Yeah. Thus setting off the chain of events we know to happen. Yeah. He asks the fateful question. Yeah. And we know what Clark wants. Yeah, that's like the end. To, that's like the, the credits theme is yeah. Mr. Morden like, the door opens, Clark's there, Morden walks in, and he's all like, what do you want? Yeah. To credits, like, perfect. And scene, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, how do you rate this episode of Babylon 5? I would watch the shit out of this episode. Yeah, this does sound like a good one, right? This sounds like a this really a good winner. episode, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, writers, looks like you're replaceable. Yep. <laughs> Someone get ChatGPT to put a script together. 
I'm kidding, writers. I support your strike. Of course. Wholeheartedly, just in case this is the first time you're listening to me and you don't know how I feel about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mind blowing to me that this would you just pick an episode and start. But yeah, I, I know people listen to podcasts like that. No, obviously, writers, we greatly support you in your strike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this might be a stellar episode, but I feel like we've had some real duds on this. So <laughs> for sure, this is fantastic. This is a good one, though. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put this at four out of five. Yeah. And if we got a, a professional writing team behind it, it might be a five. Mm-hmm. Solid. We we can give them the bones and they can put all the meat on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're clearly producers, right? Yep. Well, speaking of good episodes, yeah, we have an episode ahead of us to talk about, and we can decide whether it's good or not. Do you not like this episode? We, we, we got to save that for the end, but your statement leads me to believe you might not be a fan of this episode. I, I'm not going to spoil anything for the end. Let's just uh, get into it. Get into it. Yeah. All right. We kind of get some more of that like last time on stuff. We but do. But this time it's from Dr. Franklin. Who is actually in this episode. Yeah. Actually, we get a lot of people in this episode that we didn't get much of in the previous episode. So. On purpose. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like we got to go back and get some of the gang that we left out. Yep. Yeah, we got season four, episode two. Whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi? Where in the world is Mr. Garibaldi? Yeah. We open on Franklin's recap with a gaff. He says nice. Sheridan's been missing for 14 days and Garibaldi's been gone for nine. They went missing oh. the same day. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. It is. JMS yeah, noted on be. Usenet. Someone's all like, hey, this thing, like, that doesn't feel right. He's like, it's not. I went Uh back and changed the date after I changed the script, but I only changed it once and not twice. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, he forgot the old uh, control F. (laughs) It'll happen. Yep. Lanier tells Franklin there's a problem with Delenn, while Sheridan guests on our podcast. But instead of hosted by us, it is two of those pull string dolls of us that they used to make as toys in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Where they only have like Mm -hmm. one saying. You know, there's Uh like... What do you want? What do you want? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What do you want? What do you want? It's those. I don't know if you knew that yeah. that was in our merch store that totally exists, yeah. uh, but you can get those dolls on our merch <laughs> store. So you should totally go check that out. Definitely. <laughs> it's, they're out of sale. They, they've actually been out of stock since the 80s. So yeah. Good luck That's finding one bad. on eBay. Yeah. 19.99 was the original cost. Yeah. <laughs> Sheridan wakes up from the nightmare of being interviewed by us. Uh, uh-huh. just totally geeking out at him to Lorian being that super stoned guy at the college party two weeks into philosophy 101 mm-hmm. like we get it dude the brain is a fucking marvel yeah so <laughs> we get that to theme mm-hmm. and then uh, Sheridan is just incredulous when we come back from theme that he could be dead yeah even though he remembers falling and falling for a very long time yeah Lorian says that there is never a good answer to who are you, and I am personally wounded because I feel like we've had some really great cold opens on this podcast. (laughs) It's funny you say that because I was like, yeah, there really isn't, is there? (laughs) (laughs) Can confirm. So I don't know. I guess that shows something else about each of us, doesn't it? (laughs) We get a one of two variations we'll see on the, the big questions here. What are you? Mm-hmm. And, Lorian, that's rude. This isn't Florida. You can, just can't ask someone that. And for fuck's <laughs> sake, if you do, don't ask them like that. Ask them what their pronouns are. It's not that fucking yes. hard. Be polite. <laughs> Ugh. L- Lorian tells Sheridan his pronouns are now past tense as he checks yeah. for a pulse and doesn't have one. Yeah, bummer. Bummer. So this conversation continues. Lorian kind of reminds me of a friend I have here. Oh, yeah? I have a friend who firmly believes this is like, this is this is his view of the universe. Everything is 50-50. Doesn't matter what okay. it is. Either it is or it isn't. It will or it won't. Everything is always 50-50. In There's no every gray aspect of life. Or rather, it's all gray until it isn't, I think. Oh, okay. All I, don't, right. I don't know. It's 
like you'd ask him the weather and he'd be like oh like because you're camping right and he'd be like oh it'll rain or it won't it's like (laughs) not what i was asking buddy there's actually science but yeah well at least you know at least your friend reminds you of this wayne alexander character (laughs) and not i was gonna say moriarty again (laughs) what is his name jack the ripper yeah jack the ripper (laughs) Man, I I have to admit, like, I am I'm a pretty active pacifist. Like when it comes to real life shit. Okay. Okay. Uh, violence is is not an answer. Violence is a multiplier of suffering. Sure. Yeah. And while violence has solved problems in the very broadest sense, it has always caused more problems in turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So I can't say that I fully understand Sheridan's reaction when he throws Larian against the wall but I felt it man like he is real fucking annoying yeah yeah like the thought had crossed my mind and then well if a dead man pushes you against a wall does it hurt (laughs) (laughs) probably (laughs) Uh, Jakar arrives on Nimbus 3 and uh, meets with a role that would surely be played by Pete Davidson in the reboot. Yeah. This, yeah. This is Lenny Sotrano, who is a thug in like 50 movies. This uh-huh. is like what he does. But the guy who comes up and starts the fight, did his voice sound familiar to you at all? He seemed familiar. Yeah. Why? Why does he seem familiar to me? This is Anthony DeLongis. And his uh-huh. IMDb page is rivaled only by a CVS receipt. Okay. The dude has been it, in give me some highlights. everything. Well, hey, I'll start off with V. What up, Scott? Gray 17. We got to get that rolling. Uh, uh-huh. He's in Roadhouse. He's a Kazon in Voyager. He's the voice nice. of Marshall Johnson in the Red Dead games. He's still working. He's still actively doing voice acting and physical acting. Yeah. Dude is everywhere. He has something like 150 credits. Guy. And most of them are as a stuntman, too. Like, he has a bunch of acting credits, and then he has a bunch of stuntman credits. So he's made that transition. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even writer, director. Yeah. Anyways, Marcus heard that there was going to be a bar fight. So he shows up uh-huh. as we find Delenn has left everyone on red. I like that Marcus shows up here because, you know, we had girls trip in the last episode, and now we've got boys trip. Boys trip. <laughs> They kind of didn't. They didn't trip together. They met up at on locale, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to drive separate. I get it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, the Len is just ignoring everyone. Franklin goes to check up on her uh, to remind her that she's part human and needs to fucking eat. Yeah, I actually good point. I had written like four more jokes here, but Mira Uh just acts the hell out of this scene. She does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say no notes because she fucking. Uh pulled at my heartstrings i'm like sitting here ha 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 joke 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 and then it's like oh no this is she's t- she's too good this scene i can't fucking make jokes yeah i think i did have some little tears here yeah that that phrase when where no shadows fall really gets me yeah gets me every time yeah just wait till the end of season five yeah yeah so essentially she tells franklin no dice i'm gonna continue my fast yeah i'm gonna continue morning so back on the planet Marcus and Jakar are trying to figure out what to do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're worried that the thugs are still looking for them. Like, it was just a little bar fight. They should have given up by now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. I do love their exchange here. Marcus telling Jakar, I assumed because you went looking for someone in trouble that you yourself would find trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great stuff. Accurate. Marcus is very smart. <laughs> Marcus tries to warn Jakar about his staff. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah. Our thugs get an ID on Citizen Jakar from some Centauri guards while Marcus interrogates Pete Davidson. And then I love that the Centauri apparently use hexagonal paper. Like Battlestar Galactica, the next show we'll be watching on this podcast. Oh, right, right. Okay. <laughs> so that, that gets carried over. Cool. Yeah. We found the link. They're same universe. It's canon now. So say we all. Oh. Obviously, yeah. Franklin is going through Sheridan's room when he calls Delenn to show her something he found. Uh, He's got a log entry from May the previous year. This is about a month or so after our three-parter in the first half. Okay. uh, Because they tell us that's April, and then he says the date is May at the start of the log entry. 
Okay, and gotcha. We actually don't have any episodes set in May from last season. It jumps from hmm. April to June. Hmm. Okay. Cause... That's because Sheridan was busy falling in love. Yeah, other nerds figured mm-hmm. that out for me. So I just thank you, Babylon 5 Wiki people. Yeah. So uh, he talks a bit about jumping off of a cliff here. This is pretty poor taste, Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Delenn doesn't know that he jumped, right? <laughs> She just knows he went to Zaha Doom and didn't come back. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, wait. Or did did Veer tell her that he jumped? I don't think Veer just... knew. I think... Veer knew that the White Star crashed. Oh, no. He was last seen jumping into the cavern. Yeah. Yeah, she oh, told... so she did know. Oh. Rude. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sheridan's one of those people foreshadowing his own death. Right. Cool. I got a question for you here. Mm-hmm. Is the implication that Franklin found this, I'm going to, you want to call them DVCs or do you want to call them like calcite rays? The the videos that are stored on crystals. Oh, I like DVCs. A DVC. <laughs> uh, you think he like found this with this on it or is Franklin like going through all of his personal logs? Yeah, that's a good question. Also, is Franklin not clearing the browser history by showing something like this? Yeah, you got to clear the browser history. Be a bro. Let me be clear. Clear my browser history. <laughs> like, no one needs that. <laughs> yeah. The kind of life I've had, like, my two truths and a lie are, I've been threatened to be sued by the Special Olympics. I have almost sued the TV show Supernatural, and I was sent to cease and desist by Doctors Without Borders. What I search is between me, Google, and everyone they sell that shit to, not you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ugh. It's so upsetting to think about someone just going through your shit like that. And like having I mean, yeah. like having done this for, you know, people that have passed and having to go through mm-hmm. their things. Like, I can't imagine finding a diary sitting down reading it while going through all of Uh their stuff and then calling their girlfriend in mourning to be all like, Oh, Hey, here's this really nice diary entry about you. Like, did he stop when he, she, he started to talk about falling in love. Did he listen to the whole thing and then call her? Like, Uh I mean, we know Franklin has a history with some questionable choices in how Uh much research he's willing to do. So I would think that he would just do the bare minimum because that's how mm-hmm. he always does his research when it's about something like this. But maybe not. I don't know. It's just, it felt skeezy to me. I could see in the instance, like, of this sort of disappearance that Sheridan has. You know, he kind of goes rogue and then disappears and dies and whatever. Maybe you need to to read the last few pages of the diary, you know. Fair. Just, like... Try to figure it out, put some pieces together, but he yeah. went back to May. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was not. I don't the think you needed to go in the back that far. I mean, maybe yeah. it was the previous entry. Maybe he just went and looked at the most recent private log, and that's the last time he did one. <laughs> yeah, that, that seems weird, though, right? It, like, our captains are supposed to be logging a little bit more often. I mean, but... maybe it's just Star Trek spoils us as a plot device. I don't know. True. Mm-hmm. Could be. Meanwhile, Jakar and Marcus decide to Scooby-Doo and split up, with Marcus heading back to Babylon 5 and Jakar getting God. This is the rookie mistake. Mm-hmm. You never split the party. Nope. Let's split up and look for more clues. Don't split the party. Don't split the party. Marcus would have taken out like four of those Centauri dudes. Would not have been yeah. a problem. Yeah, he would have heard him coming. We know mm-hmm. our Marcus. Although I guess that would have long-term implications for the story, Jakar not getting caught. That's not a conversation we're having right now. No, 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 no. We'll get there very soon. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Jakar gets himself caught by the Centauri. He puts up a little firefight first. Yeah. He he shoots like one dude. Yeah. He tries. Mm. Given he like totally knew they were about to jump him, you'd figure he could get more than one because he's like awake and listening and I don't know. Mm -hmm. It felt very un Jakar to me. Yeah, but the, they the should have written a demands. few more. But maybe we didn't have the extras to like yeah. mow down. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, if there aren't four dudes, you're not taking Jakar in, so you can only kill one because you've got five extras. Mm-hmm. Right. That's fair. I would rather that than him fight 
five dudes kill four of them and then get taken in by one. That seems less heroic. Yeah. Back on Babylon 5, Delenn's uh, viewing of the diary has given her a little change of heart. Mm -hmm. And she's decided that she needs to gather the whole White Star fleet. Yep. And try to mount a full-scale attack on Zaha Doom. Yep. You know, with... They still have a few members of the League of Non-Aligned Worlds, I think, that are yeah, on their side. They're calling a couple allies, but the League itself is kind of kaput. Yeah. 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 She's just like, hey, we're going on a suicide mission for my boyfriend. I mean, attacking Z Zaha Doom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally no ulterior motives here. Right. Meanwhile, on Centauri Prime, Lando gets woken up so he can spit sick shit at royal court. When Kantarja gives Lando a gift, Jakar and Chains. Yeah, what he's always wanted, apparently. Mm -hmm. Jakar gets a moment to speak here, and he decides the most important thing is to let Lando know that Garibaldi is missing. I think this is a good choice, though. A hundred percent. Because Lando definitely had a bond with Mr. Garibaldi, even if it kind of got broken mm -hmm. by his, you know genocide <laughs> you don't have to whisper it <laughs> <laughs> it's just awkward you know yeah. when you when you do a little light genocide so embarrassing so embarrassing but we know that londo still has a connection and feelings for mr garibaldi yeah. and that, that, that sounded very awkward and romantic but you know what i mean <laughs> i I have not looked at Archive of Our Own, but I assume that that is the place for that particular yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> for that particular bromance. Right. Yeah. You, I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So Jakar knows he's going to care. Yeah. And I'm glad that that's what he decided to say. Agreed. This is super smart play by Jakar. Then we cut to the aforementioned Mr. Garibaldi in all 20 seconds we see him in in the episode that bears his name. Yeah. He's not in great shape. No. He's like in a hexagonal room. It is a very nondescript cell. Mm-hmm. And his captor is not forthcoming with information. But uh, when he turns to violence, they gas him. And uh, Yeah, they're just like taunting him over speaker. Did you connect the dots on who this was? At this point, like you probably remember from watching the show previous. Yeah, I are you saying I'm supposed to get something from the voice itself or no, the voice is different. It's the, the man okay. entering the room. OK, tell me about the man entering the room. Like I, kn I know from having watched the show. OK, we're not supposed to know at this point. OK, but knowing and seeing it's pretty obvious to me and looking at old mm -hmm. Usenet posts. A ton of people clocked this. Okay. And JMS was like adamant about not saying anything. So I will not say anything as well as it's not confirmed that it's who you know it is at this point. Are we supposed to know it's a specific person? I mean, there's a very clear uniform that is missing one clear okay. insignia. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, okay. And there's also a height build and hair that match okay pretty closely okay gotcha anyways lando goes to visit jakar also in captivity we get see lando and or we see jakar and garibaldi in captivity back to back yeah. lando tells jakar what is in store from him this is clearly like i've seen this happen not a this is what you have to look forward to like i don't wish this upon my worst enemy which is literally you by the way mm-hmm like no yeah this, this is, is a this description if we were seeing this show as it is in this era that we are now in of prestige television mm -hmm. like we would have gotten a scene already where Cartagia is doing this to somebody yeah right like kind of like our ramsey boltons in game of thrones mm -hmm. like the the despicable things that some of our bad characters in that series did we, we saw it. We definitely would have gotten this with the Cartagia. It would oh, not yeah. just be a Londo monologue For here sure. in the jail. Although it is one of those things that I feel like is a bit lost on television these days where it is scarier sometimes to tell and not show. Mm -hmm. So let, let yeah. your brain put the image together and it will be scarier mm -hmm. than anything that they could. 
Anyways, Lando brings Jakar in on the plot to kill Kartaj. And Jakar agrees to help for the future of the Narn. Yeah, Jakar is not going to go along with this unless he gets something out of it for Narn. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lando tries to say, well, you can't bargain. You're in jail. And Jakar's like, well, you can't bargain either because you're trying to assassinate your emperor. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> yeah. They both have each other up against a wall. Sheridan has walked in a giant circle, making it back to his campfire. Lorian mm-hmm. takes the physical opportunity to reference the metaphysical and brings the conversation back where it started. And then mm. Lorian reveals that he is not a first one, but the first one. So is Lorian God? He's basically God, right? Oh my God. Are you God? This is something posed to JMS, actually, was asked directly this question. Yeah, okay. And he's like, he is a god no more than any other person who is alive is. Just okay. like, no, he's just the first dude. He's just like the first being that, it, the first sentient, like, mm-hmm. not a god. I mean, how do you define god, I suppose? But yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, if it's immortal and, you know, like, there's there's definitely definitions from various cultures that would fit. Yeah. Uh, but not the omnipresent creator kind of monotheistic vibe. Probably not. Lorian's been waiting for someone to talk to and reveals that the shadows come to Zahadum for him to show respect. Yeah. He's, Weird he's way to here. show respect, I suppose. Yeah. Lorian sees Kosh and Sheridan and Sheridan puts together that Kosh was directing him to Lorian. Lorian tells him to embrace life, not just flee from death. And we get another question in between our two here. Why are you? Yeah. Which was interesting. And didn't uh, didn't Emperor Turian ask that as well? I believe why so. Why are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. yeah. That's a third very important question. Yeah. Lorian's like, dude, you need to go to therapy. And Sheridan's like, no. I don't have to answer your questions. Men would rather die than go to therapy. <laughs> rather Men would rather jump in a bottomless chasm on Zaha Doom than go to therapy. Men would rather literally nuke their ex-wife than go to therapy. Well, I don't see the problem. <laughs> uh, Sheridan does think of a reason to live, though. Delenn and the Lorian mm. breathes on the embers of life to credits. All right. Laura, what'd you think of this one? Gosh, what we had uh, the last episode is just kind of average, right? Yeah. We called it number three. Mm. I can't check because it's actually in my old notebook. I've I moved on to a new notebook. I managed to fill an entire notebook with notes oh, from our show. Wonderful. Just about. There's a handful of woodworking notes in there and some measurements of this house before I bought it so that I could plan my kitchen and stuff. But. <laughs> Well, I was gonna say we could auction it on eBay, but I guess I don't. We don't want people knowing about your kitchen. I like. I keep all my notebooks. Uh-huh. I've got a. I've got a couple of them over there. Yeah. Someday when this podcast is famous, we'll just auction nah, that. I'm off. keeping my notebooks. Okay. <laughs> there's not even personal notes in them, but there's like D and D campaign notes and stuff. I like. I don't segment my notebooks. They're by time, so I just have them all that way. Whatever's going on in my life. Man, I I like this one. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready to call it a four yet. Maybe we're making incremental improvements. Maybe this is a 3.5 for me. Yeah. yeah. I. What about you? I'm going to put this at a four or five. Oh, okay. It's a four or five? I loved this episode. 4.5. All right. This is the perfect tons of shit happens episode mm-hmm. of this yeah, series. Yeah, for sure. And the reason this clicks and all of the other ones don't is the other is all tons of shit happens through the lens of plot. This one is all tons of shit happens through character driven. Every single moment in this is a character driven moment of them dealing with the repercussions of their actions or choosing to act instead of 
things happening around them, which is usually what it feels like in this type of episode where it's just a ton of plot acceleration. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, Babylon 5. This is the shit. This is why I watch this show is episodes like this. Yeah, I I really enjoy the stuff with Jakar. Yeah. Especially, you know, the, the, the one thing that's motivated him to give up his sanctuary is to go look for Mr. Garibaldi. Mm-hmm. And that is so important. I also love the way we keep fleshing out Cartagia. Mm-hmm. He's just bonkers. Yeah. By the way, you looked up one of our thugs. Yeah. In uh, IMDb. I decided to look up the actor for Cartagia. Yeah. You want to know what he's been up to? Nothing. He is a lawyer. He's a lawyer? Good for him. Yeah, he gave up acting and went went and uh, became a lawyer. His, his stage name was Wortham Krimmer. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Wortham is not his name. It was his first wife's maiden name. Huh. So he was going by Wortham Krimmer, and now he is Robert Krimmer, and he is an attorney. <laughs> Good for him. I love it. I really hope that he brought all that Cartagia energy into the courtroom sometimes. I like, am super curious, but also hope I never find out. I mean, obviously. <laughs> he's he's almost in his 70s now, so. Yeah. I don't know. Could be really fun. Could be like chaos in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's great. I mean, this, this uh, stuff that's moving forward is great. I can't wait to see what we get in the next episode. Which is... Season four, episode three, The Summoning. Oh. A mysterious spacecraft heads towards Babylon 5 as Ivanova and Marcus search for more first ones to aid in the war. Babylon 5 welcomes back its missing officers. The Vorlons undertake a new fighting tactic. Interesting. Missing, they're they're welcoming back the missing officers. Yeah. Plural. Mm-hmm. So. Well, there's only two missing, so. Yeah, I think we're going to get some resolution on both those plots, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to that. But before we get there, got to say thank you, Jeremy Siegel, for our lovely theme music and not accepting my friend request. We really love that you were able to put that together for us. We truly appreciate it. You can find more of Jeremy's work at jeremysiegel42.bandcamp.com and also his Nuclear Jaguar on Spotify, where Jeremy's competing in the Album a Month Challenge, uh, and they're all great so far. Let's give them a listen. Yeah, rocking it. And thank you to Angry Duck Time Machine on Instagram for our podcast artwork. Thanks, Aaron, for editing our podcast. We really appreciate all the time you put in to listen to us oh talk. Oh, my gosh, yes. And then thank you, listener, for listening to spending some time with us, listening to our show. We, we do appreciate that. Join our Discord community. All of our friends there appreciate you. I know someone's going to ask me about my two truths and a lie there. I may or may not say something. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely I was sitting there in my mind going, okay, which one could it possibly be? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two of those are real stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're stories, too. I feel like we need to, to sit and discuss those at the next Star Trek Las Vegas. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week, Internet. All right. Bye. Bye.